So if we look at this reaction, we have two hydrogen molecules reacting with one oxygen molecule to produce two water molecules. And this is an equilibrium, so we have also our water molecules breaking back down into hydrogen and oxygen. Another way we can look at this is using the chemistry unit called a mole. So just like molecules, we have two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, and two moles of water being formed. The G's in parentheses indicate that these are all in the gaseous state. So S would rep represent solids, L would represent liquids, and AQ represents a, an aqueous solution where a solid has been dissolved in water. So when we're calculating the equilibrium constant, the equilibrium constant is denoted by K with a subscript EQ. K represents constants in chemistry, and the subscript EQ signifies specifically the equilibrium constant. So in general, the equilibrium constant is going to be our amount of products over our amount of reactants. It's essentially just the ratio of the two. And for this class, we're going to be able to write the expression, but we are not really going to be solving the actual solving for the actual values. So if we're looking at this particular reaction, our product here is water. So our KEQ on the top is going to be the concentration, that's what the brackets mean, concentration of water. And because there's this two, because there's this two in front of the water, we're going to square this expression. Okay, so that's going to represent the concentration of products. Our reactants are going to be done the same way. So we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. And for the very same reason, there's a two in front of the hydrogen and not no number in front of the oxygen indicates that there's an understood one, so that that doesn't matter. But that two in the in front of the hydrogen does. So we're going to square that as well. So our KEQ expression is going to be this. <clears throat> the concentration of water squared over the concentration of hydrogen squared times the concentration of oxygen. Okay, And for this class, that's all that we're going to be able to do. So let's look at one more type of reaction just to get a little bit more practice. So if we're looking at a zinc chloride reaction, we know that zinc is always going to be plus 2 and chlorine is minus 1, so our formula is going to be ZnCl2. And this is going to be the product we're trying to form. I just wanted to go over naming and writing formulas again real quick. So the way that we form zinc chloride is typically by reacting solid zinc with hydrochloric acid. And acids are considered aqueous solutions, so that's why I'm going to write AQ in parentheses. Okay, <clears throat> so this is going to give us zinc chloride, which again was the ZnCl2, and also hydrogen gas. Okay, okay ZnCl2 is going to be dissolved, so our zinc chloride is going to be aqueous, that's an AQ. And in order to balance this equation, we're going to need a 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid. And then it would be balanced. So by the same logic, we do products over reactants. And it's important to note that solids and liquid water are not considered as part of the equilibrium expression. So our solid zinc is actually going to be ignored when we're doing our reactant side. But we have aqueous zinc chloride and hydrogen gas, so both of those are going to be important to our products. So we're going to have ZnCl2 times H2, and since those both have an understood one in front of them, it's just simply the two combined together, or multiplied together. Again, the solid zinc we're going to ignore, so the only thing we're going to have on the bottom is going to be our hydrochloric acid, and that is going to be squared in order to account for the fact that we have two moles of that. So again, products over reactants. Let's look at what would happen with values if you are presented with a value. What does that mean as far as the shift of the reaction? So because these are fractions, remember at the very beginning we said that these are simply products over reactants. So this is nothing more than a fraction.
So if this fraction is greater than 1, for example, 3 over 2, that means we have more product than reactant. So that means the reaction has shifted to the product side. If our value, if you're presented with a KEQ value that's less than 1, that would be, for example, 2 over 3, then our reactants are greater than our products, and that represents an equation that has shifted to the reverse reaction or to the reactant side. It's shifted left. And finally, if our KEQ actually equals 1, then that indicates that we are actually in a state of equilibrium. And that's all that we need to know about the equilibrium constant for honors chemistry. You learn a lot more about it in AP chemistry, but I hope that was helpful.